Located directly on the North American Continental Divide, Banff Sunshine Village is one of three ski areas in Banff National Park and one of the largest resorts in the Canadian Rockies. It may not be as well known or traveled as some of its US competitors, but Sunshine's incredibly well-rounded slopes should put it on the map for a wide variety of individuals. So is this beautiful but very remote resort right for you? In this video, we'll go through Banff Sunshine Village's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort stacks up in our overall rankings. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you want to see more exclusive tips on planning the ultimate ski trip, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all of which are linked in the description below. Banff Sunshine Village's high elevation in Canadian Rockies location endow it with some notable advantages. The resort boasts one of the longest, if not the longest, consistently good ski seasons in North America, typically opening in November, with the overwhelming majority of the resort open by the end of the month, and continuing operations through late May. Even in the spring, upper resort elevations regularly see fresh snowstorms and light, dry powder. Sunshine's raw accumulation quantity isn't the highest in North America, but the resort's strategic continental divide location furnishes it with the most snowfall of the Banff Ski Big Three Mountains. Sunshine's lowest elevation areas experience more variable snow conditions than primary terrain zones, but due to the resort's layout, most guests will only ski or ride through the bottom once a day. Arguably, the biggest deterrent to a good day at Sunshine Village is a cold spell. For a few weeks each season, the resort experiences truly frigid conditions, with temperatures dropping as low as negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 34 degrees Celsius and winds chill values plunging even lower. Occasionally, the mountain becomes so cold that Sunshine has to delay its opening or shut down operations entirely. These temperature fronts last for a week or longer in certain cases, so guests may run the risk of uncomfortable frigidity across their entire trip. But those who don't bust on temperature conditions will almost certainly come away very impressed by sunshine. The resort boasts one of the most profound aesthetics in the world, with distinctive inbounds terrain and incredible views of the Canadian Rockies that will make you want to stop at every turn. This area is extremely remote. The only access to the resort is through a striking canyon that takes a 45 degree turn about a quarter of the way up, making it impossible to see down to the base. Besides the lifts, facilities, and Mid-Mountain Village itself, there's absolutely no sign of civilization at Sunshine. Upper Mountain areas boast a 360-degree skiable footprint, affording guests near-complete bird's-eye views of neighboring mountain pods. For a mountain of its size, Banff Sunshine Village maintains a relatively unorthodox layout. The resort offers a 3,500-foot vertical drop, but about half of it runs through a near-straight valley comprising mellow terrain with remaining mountain zones mostly branching out along the sides of this valley. This results in Sunshine having a diagonal-ish horizontal feeling design rather than a straightforward bottom-to-top one. As a result, those expecting truly long runs may want to look elsewhere. Another very unorthodox element to Sunshine is the location of its village. Unlike most resorts, which host their villages at the base of the resort, Sunshine's is nestled high up in the mountains at the top station of the gondola. This makes for an extensive complex of facilities in a key mountain area, with multiple lodges, dining options, and even a first aid building. As a result, guests will never need to go far to stop in for a break. The Mid-Mountain Goat's Eye Base also hosts a smaller lodge, but it's more than sufficient to accommodate demand. While it probably won't be useful for most guests during the ski day, there's a sizable base lodge next to the parking lot too. Sunshine Village is a massive mountain, and it's one of only a few that's great for both inexperienced guests and tenured experts. A wide variety of terrain, from below treeline trails to high alpine bowls, can be found for all levels. Beginners will want to start at the Upper Mountain Strawberry Pod. This area hosts multiple green runs and doesn't service any blacks, leading to isolation from more aggressive skier and snowboarder traffic. The nearby Standish, Wawa, and Angel Pods each service green terrain as well although beginners may find the conditions off the ladder too harsh depending on the snowpack and temperature. True first-timers can learn to ski or ride on a magic carpet adjacent to the Mid-Mountain Village. Mid and Lower Mountain areas also host beginner terrain. Guests can take the Green Banff Avenue Trail back down to the base, but those looking to avoid this long, somewhat flat run can also download the gondola instead. Sunshine guests will find intermediate terrain off every lift, 
including tree-defined runs at Wolverine and Wawa, wide-open bulls on Lookout Mountain, and a range of both on Mount Standish and Goat's Eye Mountain. Most blue runs are consistently groomed, although some have sections that are ungroomed, making them great for learning moguls. The blues off Goat's Eye and Lookout host some of the resort's best panoramic views. Sunshine's terrain starts to get really interesting once guests reach advanced proficiency. In addition to traditional ungroomed mogul runs and bowls, the resort specializes in demanding glade terrain. Obstacles such as rocks and cliffs exist within these trees, and a few black diamond glade runs are even technical enough to require short sections of straight lining. On the other hand, some blacks, especially in lower mountain areas, are on the easier side. Ultimately, it takes some time exploring the mountain to figure out which blacks are less or more technical, but if you're unsure, see if you can ask a local. Sunshine hosts a handful of expert double black terrain zones, and the ones that most willing guests will find themselves on are located on Goat's Eye. These runs are no joke, and either require navigating incredibly steep trees or dropping into tenuous cornices. But the rest of Sunshine's double blacks are so tenuous that guests are required to find a partner and carry an avalanche beacon and shovel to enter. In fact, there are two resort free ride zones featuring such extreme terrain, Delirium Dive and the Wild West. Both zones comprise incredibly technical terrain with little or no room for error. Delirium Dive requires a short hike to reach, is entirely above treeline, and mandates an extremely dicey 50 degree cornice entry to most of its lines. On the other hand, Wild West starts out at a deceivingly mellow pitch before filtering into menacing colors and shoots, with a few trees thrown in across the zone as well. Hazard markings in these free ride areas are essentially non-existent, and it's not all that difficult to end up cliffed out. If you haven't been in one of these zones before, be sure to consult a local in your first endeavor. Sunshine Village also boasts a wide variety of terrain parks across various mountain areas. Boxes, rails, and jumps are rated from small to extra large and designed with progression in mind. That said, feature ratings are on the easier side, and extra large features at Sunshine are not equivalent to the monstrous obstacles found at some other resorts. When you first get to Sunshine, the experience is definitely a weird one. In order to get to all of the resort's terrain, guests will have to first travel through the Lone Base area, which is home to one of the most overworked lifts in Canada. Access comes only from a singular gondola, and the lift is a considerable choke point in the morning, as literally everyone needs to ride it to get up to other resort areas. Luckily, the gondola line moves briskly enough, and significant weights past this initial lift ride are rare. But Sunshine is not the mountain for people who might need to go back to their car in the middle of the day. Crowds on runs aren't terrible, but they're typically higher than at the more remote Lake Louise. If you want to optimize your day for the fewest lines, get off at the gondola mid-station and head to Goat's Eye first, then head to the higher elevations later on. This is essentially the inverse of typical resort circulation. Most guests ride the gondola to the upper mountain and spend their mornings there, then filter down to the Goat's Eye pod in the afternoon. When it comes to lifts themselves, Sunshine boasts a thoroughly modern setup. The overwhelming majority of terrain access comes from high-speed lifts, with only the Wawa pod seeing service exclusively from a slow chair. That said, a large portion of Sunshine Village's terrain is susceptible to uncomfortably frigid conditions, even outside of the worst cold spells. The upper mountain bowls are heavily exposed, and the wind chill in this area can often reach unbearable levels. The TP Town Luxury Express Quad, which services much of this bowl terrain, is one of the most effective bubble chair installations we've ever experienced. On days when it's too cold to even ride the upper mountain lifts up, the sheltered Wolverine pod is the place to be. For such a large mountain, it's pretty difficult to get lost at sunshine. The resort offers an intuitive layout, and it's possible to get to nearly every resort area with only two lift rides. Each trail starts with a protruding pole that advertises its trail rating, resulting in excellent difficulty markings. The mountain gets narrower as you go down, and with only one base, it's basically impossible to end up in the wrong spot at the end of the day. The one major pain point is the trail map, or rather, the three different trail maps that depict different sections of the resort. These maps are really poorly designed and make it hard to reference where you are when you're first navigating the resort. In addition, lift directions are few and far between, and it's too easy to miss a few mid and upper mountain loading areas. Finally, it's a bit of a trek from the gondola top station to some of the upper mountain lifts. 
Banff Sunshine Village is a 20 minute drive from the Banff city center, which itself is a one and a half hour drive from the Calgary International Airport with no traffic. The Calgary Airport is well served by other Canadian cities, but there are limited direct flights from the United States, and the ones that do exist can be very pricey if you don't book well in advance. The resort runs free shuttle bus services to and from town, and there are several bus options available to town from the airport. While parking at the resort is technically free, both Banff proper and Sunshine Village are within Banff National Park, and it's worth noting that those driving must purchase a park pass to park at the resort. Sunshine's parking lot area sits along a narrow canyon, and the furthest lots are a bit of a walk from the gondola. There's no premium parking option, so those hoping to get a good spot near the gondola will have to get there early. Sunshine's High Alpine Village is home to a singular, incredible on-site hotel, the Sunshine Mountain Lodge. This top-tier accommodation is pricey, but it comes with direct ski-in, ski-out access to the resort's upper mountain and generous amenities such as a hot tub and spa. This lodge is incredibly pricey, but Icon and Mountain Collective pass holders do get 15% off their booking at this entity. A much more extensive array of lodging options can be found nearby in Banff. Opera Ski at Sunshine Village is limited. The Upper Mountain Village contains a few bars, but they're typically pretty mellow. But the resort isn't a total snoozer, and the Creekside Base Lodge occasionally hosts live music. Options become much more substantial in the town of Banff itself, with several bars, restaurants, and activities to keep guests entertained. The venues are close to one another, making it easy to bar hop. So while Banff Sunshine is a bit more frigid and remote than some might prefer, it offers one of the most well-rounded experiences of any ski resort in North America. With diverse terrain for all abilities, world-class views, and a modern lift setup, Sunshine is a great place to ski or ride for essentially everyone. Ticket prices are surprisingly reasonable, topping out at 156 Canadian dollars or 118 US dollars, making the resort an incredible value for what you get. If you can make your way to this remote Canadian location and you don't get stuck there during a cold spell, chances are you won't be disappointed. Now let's go through how Banff Sunshine Village stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Banff Sunshine offers consistent accumulation throughout a typical winter, although it may not be the highest in quantity out there, and the resort gets a nine for snow. While cold spells are always a risk, Banff Sunshine's ski season is incredibly long and reliable, even compared to most other Rockies destinations, and the resort gets a 9 for resiliency. Banff Sunshine Village offers a 2,350-acre skiable footprint and a 3,358-acre footprint from boundary to boundary, earning the resort a 7 for size. Banff Sunshine boasts terrain for all ability levels, which is rare, even among destinations, and it really just falls short in truly long terrain, earning a 9 for terrain diversity. Banff Sunshine has some truly extreme restricted access areas, although the rest of the resort falls into the typical beginner to expert categories, and the resort gets an 8 for challenge. Banff Sunshine offers high speed lifts in most areas, although some of the high alpine ones are very exposed and not always enjoyable to ride. 16% of the mountain's footprint requires hiking to reach, and the resort gets a 7 for lifts. Banff Sunshine's out of base gondola is a major choke point but crowds get much better after that initial ride, and the resort gets a 6 for crowd flow. Banff Sunshine offers extensive options to go in for a break within relatively easy access of every mountain pod, and gets an 8 for facilities. The Sunshine trail map may be a mess, and there are a few flat sections required to get back to the base, but the resort isn't horrible to get around once you get to know it, and gets a 6 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. Banff Sunshine Village is an absolutely stunning resort, offering views of isolated, jagged peaks that are unparalleled in any other region. The resort is truly one of a kind, and it earns our highest score of 10 in this category. These categories add up to an overall score of 79, placing Banff Sunshine Village second in Western Canada and fifth overall. Banff Sunshine isn't the largest or most challenging mountain, but it doesn't really fall short in any notable way and it delivers one of the most beautiful on-mountain experiences one can find anywhere. The resort faces some stiff competition, but it really offers a compelling proposition. And to make matters even more incredible, it undercuts competitors in lift ticket rates by a sizable percentage. Just make sure to pack all your layers in case it gets really cold. For more information on Banff Sunshine Village and over 80 destination ski resorts, check out peakrankings.com.
See you for the next one.